Hi, my name is Max Green. I'll be presenting my paper, Model-Based Reinforcement Learning for Optimal Feedback Control of Switched Systems. Before we start the presentation, here's a quick overview. First, I'll generally discuss optimal control, then briefly discuss approximate dynamic programming, or ADP, explain why switched systems add technical challenges to the problem, and finally, I'll present some simulation results and propose some future work. In autonomous systems, optimal behavior, and therefore optimal control, is necessary for efficient operation due to finite energy or efficiency constraints. Solutions to optimal control problems can be generated in many different ways. Some of these approaches try to solve the hamilton jacobi bellman equation, or HJB for short. The HJB is a partial differential equation and the keystone to optimal control theory. The solution to the HJB is the value function, and the value function is usually unknown and nonlinear. Many solution methods use numerical techniques to generate solutions to the optimal control problems and solve the HJB, uh, but these approaches are often backwards in time and offline. Furthermore, they result in discretization of the operating domain, which can make them very computationally intensive and ill-suited for changing environments. One popular optimal control solver is dynamic programming. Dynamic programming breaks down the optimality problem and solves it backwards in time. Like I previously mentioned, uh, it, it's also ill-suited to changing environments and can also be very computationally intensive. Reinforcement learning has become a popular tool for investigating optimal control problems because it allows a cognitive agent or system overall to learn a desirable behavior based on interactions with its environment. Being able to learn the optimal control policies that minimize the cost of a controller involves the challenge of exploration versus exploitation. That is, to learn a desirable policy over the entire state space, the entire state space must be explored, but if the system is constantly explored, then it'll never ultimately meet the control objective. ADP uses reinforcement learning to generate online solutions to optimal control problems using parametric methods, such as neural networks, the cursive dimensionality problems that we see in uh, other optimal control methods still exists, however. So if we increase the number of states in the system, then we would expect a large increase in the number of required neural network basis functions. Before I go into the switched aspect of this paper, I'll lay out the general ADP problem formulation. So if we're given a control-defined nonlinear dynamical system, x dot equals f of x plus g of x times u, our objective is to design a controller that minimizes the infinite horizon cost function j, which is integral from zero to infinity of a quadratic cost in the states and control effort. The infinite horizon cost function j can be generalized as the infinite horizon cost to go problem from some point in time t to infinity. So evaluating the integral of the value function v star yields the hamilton jacobi bellman equation, which gives an optimal control condition. When we evaluate the integral of the value function, we obtain the HJB, which is shown here at the top. From the HJB, the optimal control policy, or the controller that minimizes V star, can be determined by taking the partial derivative with respect to U of the HJB at the top. However, V star can't be determined analytically, so we use the universal function approximation property of neural networks to approximate the solution online and use our neural network approximation of V star in our optimal control policy. Now, let's get into the specific problem formulation of this paper. In ADP, the objective is to approximate the optimal value function V star online, like we just said. Generally, V star is going to be unique for different sets of dynamics and cost matrices Q and R. If the dynamics or cost of a system switch discreetly, then a new optimal value function must be determined. ADP estimates the value function online, so we can expect that it can also approximate many value functions separately. Therefore, ADP can be used to approximate each respective value function of each differing set of dynamics or cost matrices. This figure shows a quick example of how different values of the cost matrices Q and R result in different performance properties for an infinite horizon cost function. From optimal control theory, we know that switching between the different Q and R matrices correspond to different feedback gains. Different gains give different transient performance. Motivated by the idea of switching between different gains to get desired performance characteristics, in this paper we develop a framework to estimate the optimal feedback control policy online while switching between different values of Q and R. 
This framework also allows switching between different dynamical system models. Generally, ADP-based methods have been proven to be stable through Lyapunov-based analyses. In the current literature, though, the stability of only one system has been analyzed. Switching between the different costs and dynamic models has not been established yet. Switching between the subsystems causes an instantaneous jump in overall Lyapunov function that you can see in the figure in the middle. So the main contribution of the paper is to develop a dwell time condition or a condition on the minimum amount of time that a subsystem must remain active before switching to the next subsystem. Each value function can be approximated with a separate single layer neural network, which is represented as wi transpose times sigma i of x. However, since the weights of the neural network w are unknown a priori, we're motivated to use two separate sets of weights, the actor and the critic weights, which are used to approximate the optimal controller and optimal value function respectively. Our overall control objective is to approximate the ideal weights w with the actor and critic weights, which will subsequently regulate the state x to zero. The Bellman error delta is an indirect residual from optimality that is used to update the actor and critic weights online. To guarantee convergence of the actor and critic weights to a neighborhood of the ideal weights, typically the persistence of excitation condition, or PE condition, has to be satisfied. To alleviate the need for the PE condition, a model-based reinforcement learning method, or MBRL, is used. Instead of determining the Bellman error just at one point along the state space, the Bellman error is evaluated at many points in the state space and at the current trajectory. You might wonder, okay, how does MBRL work into the neural network update laws? So you can see here, in addition to using the on-trajectory Bellman error in blue, those off-trajectory Bellman errors, uh, which are scattered throughout the state space, shown in green, are also used to update the weights in the continuous time update law. And here, the middle equation gamma is a least squared gain term used to facilitate learning. It's kind of like the learning rate in conventional reinforcement learning problems. Also, in the paper, we use smooth projection operators placed on these update laws. Uh, so see the paper for further details on that. To facilitate the analysis, a number of assumptions are made on the drift dynamics, control effectiveness matrices, and optimal value functions, which are assumptions one through three. Assumptions one through three are common in existing ADP literature. Assumption four comes from model-based reinforcement learning. It's a checkable condition to see if there is enough excitation caused from the selection of off-trajectory Bellman error points. Again, assumption four is common in existing ADP literature, but assumption five is a new assumption that we use in this paper, and it says that the value function uh, for each subsystem can be bounded above and below by some constant times x squared. We know this to be true for linear systems, but generally it's not true for nonlinear systems. The first theorem in the paper shows that with the previous assumptions, the Lyapunov function of each subsystem will exponentially converge to a defined region. More specifically, the state X, actor and critic weight estimation errors, and control policy U are uniformly ultimately bounded, or UUV. This result has been well studied, but what's important here, what we should take away, is that both the size of the UUV region and the exponential decay rate are quantifiable. So recall the figure from earlier in the presentation with the decaying Lyapunov function and discrete jumps. When switching between the different Lyapunov functions for each subsystem, the actor and critic weight errors will change discreetly, so they'll, they'll jump up suddenly discreetly. Assumption 5 on each subsystem's optimal value function is made to account for the portion of the jump caused by the different optimal value functions. More specifically, assumption 5 lets us account for the continuity of the states between each subsystem's optimal value function. In theorem 2, we develop a quantifiable dwell time condition that dictates how long we must remain in one subsystem before switching to another subsystem. We can calculate the dwell time only because the exponential decay rate and size of the jump are known. Furthermore, knowing the decay rate's jumps and number of switches, the time it takes to reach the largest UV region, which is shown in the figure, can also be bounded. So the significance in lower bounding the time before reaching the UB region is useful in telling us what the best case minimum time for convergence is. 
Here's the theorem statement for theorem 2. It says that there exists a minimum dwell time tau that each subsystem must satisfy before switching to the next subsystem, which guarantees stability of the overall switching sequence. And the capital T, which is kind of in the second half of the statement, is the minimum time that the system will take to reach the UB bound. Now I'll present some simulation results for three different subsystems. So the dynamics that are used in the simulation are based on linearized F16 longitudinal dynamics. In the simulation, we assume that the dynamics switch instantaneously, which may not be realistic, but the idea here is to illustrate system performance. Here are the parameters used for each subsystem. Each system has its own Q and R matrices and also has different learning parameters. You can see in the table at the bottom right. Furthermore, the switching sequence between the three subsystems is chosen arbitrarily. So on the right hand side on that figure, you can see the convergence of the state X. So note that between each subsystem, the transient performance is different. So it looks similar to the figure I presented earlier in the presentation where I switched between the different optimal control gains. So we get different transient performance in each subsystem. Here you can see the progression of the critic weights on the left and the optimal value function approximations on the right. So note the learning progression on the left uh, the weights start to learn, the system switches, learns some more and switches back. But when we switch back to a subsystem, the weights resume learning exactly where they left off and what appears to be like, the exact same slope of, and learning rate. Since the simulation example has linear dynamics, the optimal value function can be determined a priori. Our ADP estimate can then be compared to the actual value. So. Uh, on the right, you can see the first subsystem starts to approximate the first optimal value function. It gets pretty close within the first five seconds that it's activated, but doesn't quite make it. Then when we switch to the second subsystem, at about the six second mark, the second optimal value function is approximated quite well. So what are the next steps for this technique? Obviously, to relax the assumption on the bounds of the value function uh, would be a big contribution. But furthermore, we also want to look at potential applications of this technique in aerospace, specifically like with configurable aircraft. Thanks for watching my presentation. At this time, I'll take any questions.